Next up, Jobs Ohio's new federal military sector. Good morning, my name is Elaine Bryant, exec and I am the Executive Vice President for Aerospace and Defense at the Dayton Development Coalition. I'm also the Managing Director for the new military and federal sector at Jobs Ohio. And today I am joined by my colleague, Julie Sullivan, who is Executive Vice President for Regional Development at the Dayton Development Coalition. We are excited today to tag team this presentation to you to discuss some of the initiatives going on in our region through our organization and through Jobs Ohio. And with that, I'll turn it over to Julie. Thanks, Elaine. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here with us. I thought maybe it would be helpful to start out with a bit of an overview of our organization if you're not uh, familiar with us. So at the Dayton Development Coalition, um, our mission is simple to cause to create job growth in the Dayton region through recruitment, expansion, and retention efforts throughout the Dayton region. Our four area of focuses include, included under the umbrella organization are our uh, work with existing industry and attracting new industry in through our partnership with Jobs Ohio. We also manage a $9.1 million seed stage fund for uh, promising startup businesses through our accelerant program. We work specifically with uh, private industry and the Air Force uh, through our aerospace and defense initiatives uh, related to Wright Pat, Springfield Air National Guard, and uh, our VA Center. And the fourth area is work that we do uh, on behalf of the region through advocacy efforts, uh, whether it's at a federal level or a state level. We recognize an economic development that in order for us to be uh, as successful as possible, we need uh, to be fully aligned with uh, our legislators, those individuals that are creating policy that have an impact on uh, the business that we do. So, the coalition helps businesses connect to the resources they need so they can continue uh, to innovate and spur growth. We do this uh, not alone at all. We always say that economic development is a team sport. So we are working in close collaboration with local and state partners to do our work. A little bit of history back in 2008, the coalition leadership established what they felt at the time was an aggressive plan for growth to bring 10,000 new job opportunities to the Dayton region by 2020. Oop, my apologies. JP Nassif, now president and CEO of Jobs Ohio, made this bold goal in the middle of the recession. And at the time people thought he was a little crazy. But I think that this just shows that when Dayton sets a bold goal, we put our heads down, we work hard and hit it out of the park. And the more than 23,000 jobs that have been created through 2019 really only reflects a portion of the total job creation uh, that's taken place in the region because it only includes economic development projects that we've been part of. Year over year, growth is happening in all parts of our region. And this map in particular is a great representation uh, of you know, really showing the 12 county service area that we have and uh, the growth that's taking place in all parts of our region. So back in January of this year, we uh, felt really strongly that we were on track for a record year. Coming off of a tremendous 2019, our team and the entire region uh, were poised for even greater growth. We had record low unemployment, uh, increased wages across multiple sectors, urban revitalization, lots of great things happening. Our community had been nationally recognized multiple times over for resiliency out of very unprecedented tragedies that happened in our community. Oscar winning Daytonians, the Dayton region achieving a number one ranking for economic development and a national spotlight on our very own Dayton Flyers, who in my personal opinion were on track for an NCAA national championship. So at the time life was good. Days before our regions planned first for festival to celebrate the NCAA tournament kickoff, the first positive coronavirus cases were reported 
and the economy soon came to a halt, as we all know. Our region and our nation went from record low unemployment to levels not seen since the Great Recession, something that occurred literally overnight. Unemployment peaked in late April at nearly 100,000 unique claims across the region. And although the region has recovered the mass majority of these jobs, unemployment levels uh, are still nearly 10 times of that of this same time period in 2019. But we did not pause. We did what we've gained national recognition for, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps to meet business needs. Economic development organizations in the Dayton region and across Ohio quickly pivoted to business support services and job retention efforts. The Dayton Development Coalition team and our local economic development partners drew on our expertise from the Great Recession to provide support to local businesses. We began immediate business outreach by phone and by video conferences, touching base with more than 600 local businesses since March. This included sharing information uh, regarding financial assistance available to companies. Our project managers contacted all open projects in the economic development pipeline. We connected with projects in progress regarding their job creation timelines. The coalition worked with the Air Force, state and federal officials and Jobs Ohio to provide roundtables and information sessions for local businesses. And this did include specific roundtable discussions for our defense contract community. And Elaine Bryant joined the State of Ohio Task Force to procure the essential PPE for our Ohio institutions. Our partners at Jobs Ohio also quickly pivoted to create multiple programs to generate immediate relief and impact. This is a bit of an eye chart, I know, um, but several of these programs were implemented in partnership uh, uh, between the Dayton Development Coalition and Jobs Ohio, including distribution of more than 1,500 PPE toolkits to small businesses across our 12 county region. And we identified regional businesses eligible for Jobs Ohio loan deferment program, workforce retention loans, and innovation fund grants. These activities had a tremendous impact, not the least of which was investing $250 million uh, among 10 new programs, impacting more than 15,000 businesses, including the Dayton region, but across the state of Ohio. I share this recent activity not as yet another reminder of the struggles our community and our country is facing, but rather to highlight the strong state relationship, state leadership, and agility of our economic development network, which has set the stage for what comes next. And although we're not yet out of the woods, we are emerging and we see tremendous opportunity ahead. Because of our state's strong leadership, we're emerging with the top rainy day fund balance, the second highest bond rating and pension fund level, and we are ranked second in real GDP growth. In addition to those fiscal management items that are the foundation for success, Ohio is being recognized nationally by business and industry with a series of top 10 rankings Many of these rankings are significant improvements from just five years ago. So if we're well positioned to grow, what are our priorities? What are the elements of the plan that position us to take advantage of growth opportunities? We wanna leverage the positive global awareness that we've gained uh, by our Governor DeWine's response to the coronavirus. We will focus on Ohio businesses, Dayton region businesses first providing opportunities for our companies to expand or consolidate and modernize. We're prioritizing getting Ohioans back to work through reskilling and helping match any displaced Ohioans with jobs. We wanna grow and retain more college graduates and we wanna bring talent back to the heartland from the coasts. We're diversifying our deal-making and risk-taking through innovation district initiatives Fund, more funding for entrepreneurs, 
tools for digital transformation and site development initiatives. And we want to ensure inclusive recovery for all Ohioans. So creating sustainable recovery requires us to be inclusive and addressing things like broadband access in all parts of the state is important and creating tools for underrepresented populations and geographies. And these plans, these elements of our plan will be implemented by doubling down on existing programs that are foundational to economic development and introducing new programs that take our work to the next level. Jobs Ohio has rolled out a series of new programs in 2020 that just add to our economic development toolkit that can be implemented here in the region. Several of these are listed here. Our Ohio site inventory program was put together to mitigate developer risk and speculative development to help bring sites closer to being ready for industry projects. Vibrant community program was created to assist distressed communities with the implementation of catalytic development projects Jobs Ohio Inclusion Grant to provide funding for projects in designated distressed communities and or businesses owned by underrepresented populations. And the Jobs Ohio Innovation Fund was a pilot to provide convertible loans towards innovative startup companies to help protect the investments that already had been pledged towards those businesses. We've seen initial success in all of these and believe that there will be uh, continued opportunities to provide these services moving forward. And last on the list is the launch of Ohio's 10th industry sector, military and federal. The military and federal sector is Jobs Ohio's newest initiative as they've come to recognize the significance, the importance of military installations in their missions to the growth of the economy, not just in the Dayton region, but across the entire state. Because of our years of experience working with Ray Pat and other federal installations, Jobs Ohio tapped the Dayton Development Coalition to stand up this new sector. And now I'd like to turn things over to my colleague Elaine, who is leading the initiative for the Dayton region and for the state, Elaine. Thank you, Julie. Lots going on, as Julie mentioned, and this sector is very exciting for us right now because it really is an opportunity, not just for our state, but definitely for our region, because as we recognize the importance of our statewide assets, it helps our region here locally as well and vice versa. Uh, we all rise together as we leverage uh, this new sector. And so now if uh, Julie, you don't mind going to the next slide, I wanna talk a little bit um, about why they created a new sector. So Julie mentioned they recognize the importance of these military and federal uh, installations. This chart here is just a snapshot. So you can see um, that there are various installations, both military and federal. And the reason that we say federal is because we are including our, um, our friends um, in their federal missions in NASA, Glenn and Plum Book. It is very important that uh, we also leverage those missions and what they bring to the table in terms of economic development for our state. Uh, so as you can see, this snapshot um, is just a, a subset. There are hundreds across both active, reserve. Um, we also have um, guard units. And as I mentioned, NASA. We also have uh, DFAS, DLA, and many others across the state. And so it's just really exciting that Jobs Ohio has recognized the importance of these missions to economic development. And now they are mirroring what we've been doing here locally in Dayton across the state. So let's talk a little bit more about why this is important. When you look at our other nine sectors in Jobs Ohio, next slide, Julie, if you don't mind. We, um, I have two slides here and they list the um, all 10 um, industry sectors that Jobs Ohio that we represent. You can see we are leading obviously job numbers in the advanced manufacturing. And you can see where the others lay out there in terms of logistics, financial, automotive, and IT. If you go to the next slide you, slide, you will see that federal and military jobs are actually the number six in terms of jobs. So that map that I showed you with the snapshot is just a, 
a representation that there are 93,000 uh, folks working on military installations, working at NASA, working at DLA, working at DFAS all across uh, our state in these um, federal positions. And so it, it's, it, it is an imperative that we pay attention to these jobs, the importance of these jobs, and how the men and women working in these jobs, both in and out of uniform, contribute to the economic growth and vitality of our great state and our region. Next slide. So before we get into a little bit of the strategy and how we're doing this statewide, um, I just wanted to highlight the team. So uh, JP Nassif, our Jobs Ohio president, um, working with uh, Jeff Hoagland at the Dayton Development Coalition, uh, we really, they really wanted to make sure that we had the right perspective, the right approach. And so they in, um, reached out to folks who uh, just uh, care deeply, not just for the state of Ohio, but also for our local Dayton region here um, in uh, retired uh, Chief Mosley, uh, retired General Lyles and retired General um, Owens. Um, they are folks that have served uh, in our great Air Force and that have, and know the importance of this sector and bringing jobs and taking care of our active duty, uh, our civilians, and of course our veterans as well. And so we have really leveraged them to uh, help us with this new sector. Um, of note, um, uh, Chief Mosley was former Chief of Staff uh, of the Air Force. Uh, General Lyle still very active on multiple boards. Uh, he was a Vice Chief of Staff of the Air Force and uh, Commander of um, here at Wright Patterson Air Force Base for um, AFMC. He is also very active with NASA. So this is critical to us as we look um, at partnering across the state with our military installations, but also our NASA installations. And so we really rely on General Lyle's perspective, bringing those together. And then of course we have General Owen um, who served here as a commander um, for ASC um, and who still um, holds uh, Dayton and the, Ohio, the state of Ohio near and dear to his heart. And so we've really relied on uh, their guidance for that. Uh, in the center there, you see uh, Colonel Joe Zies, whom you heard from earlier this morning. Uh, his energy, enthusiasm, and his charter from the governor to preserve and protect and look after the military and federal installations of the state um, it, it is just a testament to how important uh, this sector is. And so uh, we've been working in lockstep with him as we develop uh, this strategy and put this team together, and as we go out across the entire state to um, do this. We also have, um, I talked about our sectors. So we have those nine uh, industry sectors and we will be partnering across those sectors because these jobs um, and uh, the work for the military and federal installation sectors is cross cutting. Some of these jobs are aerospace. Some of these jobs are IT. Some of them are manufacturing. Um, and so uh, we work very closely with the other uh, nine jobs Ohio industry partners. Um, so we've got them there. And then uh, at the bottom there, you see uh, myself. I am uh, retired uh, 20 years Air Force, a little bit of a jack of all trades, uh, aerospace engineer, and uh, worked at NASIC in the best squadron in the Air Force. I have to throw that out there. FME, of course. Um, program management, F-35. I worked at AFRL um, and uh, also got the opportunity to teach at the Air Force Academy and be a commander there as well. So um, just when I, I wasn't sure what all my uh, experience would be able to help, I'm just really excited to be able to bring that experience to the state and to the region uh, to work with some amazing folks. Then you see there uh, Colonel retired James Dignan. He is uh, quite uh, the Patriot, served both um, active duty and in the reserves. Um, form, uh, he retired out of Youngstown um, Air Reserve Station as the uh, commander there. He knows that area very well, and he knows our guard and reserve units across the state as well. And so we have him on the team to help uh, put together the strategies and to reach out to our guard and reserve bases uh, across the state. So very fortunate to have his expertise uh, as well on the team. And then uh, last but definitely not least is Mr. Jim Free. Uh, Jim has uh, multiple years, over 30 years experience with NASA. He um, has served as the deputy for human spaceflight, and he also um, served as the NASA Glenn Research Center uh, director. Uh, he's uh, still in the Cleveland area and has ties to uh, all of the wonderful partners that we have up there in Cleveland. Um, and he has um, been instrumental and will continue to be instrumental to our space strategy 
um, of, uh, of this sector um, as we move forward um, with uh, initiatives to bring, to highlight um, space work uh, to the state of Ohio. I'll take this uh, quick opportunity just to highlight that we did have um, the very first Ohio Space Forum at the end of October. It was uh, quite the uh, opportunity to showcase all of the wonderful work across the state. A special thanks to the NASIC Association who partnered with us to put that on. The lineup uh, was phenomenal. Everyone from uh, General James from the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, to General Thompson out of SMC. And we act actually got the uh, Deputy NASA Administrator, Mr. Moorhart, and uh, several others that uh, I don't want to take up too much time mentioning at all, but the initiatives that came out of there and the recognition that, wow, Ohio has uh, phenomenal opportunities in space um, was, very, was very neat to see. And as we go into 2021, we'll take measured steps to focus on some of those initiatives coming out of that. So that just gives you a sneak peek as to some of the things that we have been doing and will continue to do as we roll out this sector. Next slide, Jane. So what does this all mean? What is our strategy? So I'm sure Joe talked about the governor's four pillars um, and this sector really is focused on that first pillar in the governor's aerospace and defense uh, strategy, and that is retention and expansion. We are solely focused on the missions um, within these military units and the missions uh, behind the fences there at NASA and um, also at DLA, DFAS. And what we want to do is we want to protect those missions. Uh, we want to preserve them and we want to grow them. We want folks both at the Pentagon and in the various um, uh, headquarters across uh, DC that make decisions to bring missions to our state. We want them to understand the value that we bring as a state um, in terms of workforce, talent. We have the universities, we have the industry folks. Um, I'm assuming most of you are, are those wonderful industry folks that we rely on to make these missions happen. And so uh, we want to make sure that we're doing our part uh, to focus on that. The second um, pillar there, that, well, that's our first pillar. That is our objective. I list the other three pillars, innovation, attraction, and talent, because we can't do it without the other pillars, just like we can't do it without the other nine sectors. It has to be a partnership. And that partnership also extends to our regional partners um, as part of Jobs Ohio uh, in, across the state. And so for innovation is we have to work with our academic partners, the universities, um, Battelle, AFRL, NASA Glenn, uh, to really be innovative and to ensure that we're producing um, the right research, the right development, and that we're working together synergistically across the state. The other piece is attraction, and that hits right at those other nine sectors. So the, um, the other managing directors within Jobs Ohio and Julie's uh, team and her folks of project managers that work um, as Jobs Ohio liaisons in our specific region, they will continue to work with companies to help them grow, to give them resources, grants, incentives uh, to continue to grow here, but also attract. So we want to keep folks here and grow them, but we also want to make sure that we as a state and we as a region are as attractive as possible to companies and talent um, and that they see the benefits of moving from, say, one of these coasts to Ohio uh, to come and benefit from the many things that the region, as many of you know, offer in terms of cost of living, opportunities, uh, workforce, proximity to uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, and all our other uh, strategic installations. And so that's our attraction piece. And then finally, talent. We can't do it um, if we don't have the people. Uh, and so we really, this one is a, a big team effort all the way down from Lieutenant, um, uh, Lieutenant Governor Husted, um, who works this um, on behalf of the governor for the state through Joe Z's, down to our universities, uh, down to organizations like SOCHI, which we have here locally and the other organizations across the state doing similar things, is we have to continue to work hard as a community to make sure that we are growing the talent and that we're keeping graduates and folks that have been here graduating from our universities so that they don't go elsewhere. We want them here. And so we think it's very important that those folks actually work on cool projects within our military bases at NASA uh, you know, at the Air Force Research Lab so that they don't think that they have to go somewhere else to have that fulfillment and to have those amazing jobs using their expertise. And as many of you know, as the Air Force and the Space Force continue their transformation to digital, uh, that workforce is going to be key 
um, to ensuring that, um, that we can successfully support that mission uh, for the Air Force and the Space Force and for NASA and, and frankly for industry as well, because even just talking to our, our folks in construction, they're going digital. Everything is moving away um, from that, you know, the last, you know, 40 to 50 years and the revolution that we've had in terms of, you know, what computers got us all the way through uh, where we are now in terms of things like digital twin um, and digital engineering and all those things. And so it's really exciting to be, a, have, be at a place right now where as a region, we can start to really um, brand ourselves and campaign and attract that talent and keep that talent here uh, in our region. And so we'll rely on you all uh, to help us as well. All right, next slide, Julie. So bringing it back um, locally here to the Dayton region, um, the economic impact um, that all of these installations across the state have um, is very significant. Um, as you can imagine, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base um, has over 30,000 employees. That's military, civilian, and contractors working on the base. And so that economic um, impact, um, as you see, um, is, is inclusive of direct and indirect impact. So as all these folks um, come in and they serve um, and they're part of the mission, they have families, they have kids, they have folks contributing to our economy, uh, both in the school systems, um, using our, our hospitals, using our medical facilities, our recreation, um, all the resources that the region has to offer. And so you can see the number there in terms of economic impact of $16 billion is quite significant. And this is not just Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. It includes our Dayton VA. This is also a very important resource, military, uh, or I should say federal resource that we have in our community, taking care of our veterans. Uh, this is huge. When we talk about talent and we talk about the area, the, the local region here in Dayton has so many retired um, military and civilian personnel that continue to stay in Dayton and continue to work here. And so the VA offers a service uh, to take care of those uh, veterans and their medical needs. And so that again is contributing to that impact. And then there's a, a little gem, uh, Springfield Air National Guard out there, uh, Colonel Fitzgerald and team, just an amazing mission. I mean, those guys um, are really at the tip of the spear uh, when it comes to the missions that they're performing uh, quietly on uh, a little post out there at Spring, um, right outside Springfield Beckley Airport. Um, but they're contributing as well. And what's so amazing about our guard is that they not only contribute um, to the dollars coming into our state in terms of their federal mission, but they contribute as folks um, in civilian clothes. They have other day jobs. So uh, I, I think of them as, you know, not double dipping, but double contributing because they have both that day job and their job uh, in uniform. And so we're just really fortunate to have them here and excited um, for their economic impact as well. And so I'm just very proud of our local region here uh, that we cover as part of the DDC. And um, that, as Julie said, it was recognized as a model. And that's why we've taken this uh, statewide. Next slide, please. So speaking of Springfield Beckley Airport, just wanted to highlight one of the initiatives that we've been working on not just locally here um, in the Dayton and Springfield community, but statewide because it involves, um, you know, all of the many um, suppliers and resources that we have across the state to make this happen. So for those of you who aren't familiar, I'll just the, the quick rundown, Agility Prime is an Air Force and NASA initiative to help commercialize the flying car uh, industrial base. So as many of you know, uh, years ago when UAVs were starting up, we had folks um, uh, working on them, but that, um, that industrial base quickly migrated overseas for manufacturing, components, um, development, and things like that. And so that it, it's difficult to find, you know, not made in China, not made somewhere else parts um, for the UAVs. And so the Air Force saw it as a national security imperative that we maintain that industrial base in the United States. And so they initiated Agility Prime under AFWorks to work with companies um, to ensure that they have the right risk mitigation to help them with airworthiness, to help them with testing um, capabilities and testing locations um, as part of various contracts with them, including um, some SIVRs and some STTRs that um, have recently been released um, here last month. And so where Ohio comes in is that we've been, as we were 
previously working on the UAVs and still are working on a lot of drone and package delivery, um, testing and resources across the state, we were poised and are poised very well to also support this flying car uh, industry here with our resources at the Ohio UAS Center, um, our resources um, outside of Columbus, and also um, with the TRC, the Route 33 corridor. Uh, we also have initiatives um, as part of the Ohio Department of Transportation under Fly Ohio and Drive Ohio uh, to work these um, various initiatives. And it just is really an exciting time because folks are recognizing as we get the word out that um, Ohio is a great place to come and research, do the research and the testing on all of these um, technologies. But what we really want to show them is that they can stay here for the long term to deploy and manufacture these vehicles. And so it, it is really an exciting time in terms of economic development to attract that industry and show them why Ohio uh, is the place to be there. And so some exciting things we've been working carefully with um, Springfield Beckley with their proximity to Wright Pat in our Air, um, Air Force Research Lab um, engineers, our airworthiness out of LCMC, um, and recognizing that the, the proximity there and the ability to test to leverage Sky Vision, which was a partnership, a huge community partnership between AFRL, the Ohio UAS Center, uh, OFRN, and various other entities. And so uh, it is exciting. We um, are looking forward to having simulators from a few of these primes. We've already have some activity, uh, some, some test flights that have been going on. Um, and then we look forward to uh, potentially bringing other um, charge to bring charging stations, not just to Springfield, but also across the state. So more to come on that. Uh, we're really excited uh, to share that and continue that uh, initiative here uh, locally and across the state. Well, so that's um, all exciting. And there's a couple other things we could probably talk about, um, but I just wanted to really invite you and in kind of the the call to action for Julie and I and the team, and, and I'll let Julie add anything. Um, I think we've got a few minutes here to end on, but is that we are excited to partner with each and every one of you, whether you're in academia, industry, uh, local government, um, within the Air Force, Space Force, um, really look to us as a resource um, to connect folks. Um, we work, a lot of our work is done behind the scenes, so a lot of folks don't often know what we're doing, and it's behind the scenes either with companies and helping them grow and do their um, uh, business development and expansion, and a lot of that, um, we also do a lot behind the scenes in terms of advocacy, which Julie mentioned out there, but there are some things that we do, um, like Agility Prime, as I mentioned, our events, um, so really our um, the two events I'll talk about and then I'll turn it over to Julie to close this out is um, for connect. So our first call to action there to connect is we have a Ohio Defense and Aerospace Forum and the Ohio Space Forum, which I mentioned. And so really call to you guys to uh, keep an eye out for our Defense Forum. It is an amazing opportunity to learn all the missions going on across the state and across the sector um, and how we can partner. Because again, we are stronger when we unite regionally and even stronger when we unite as a state and we ensure that the synergies, the proximity to each other um, and uh, all of those uh, entangling alliances are, are, are tight um, because we will work better together and grow. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Julie for our last two calls to action. Thanks, Elaine. So as Elaine said, and, and I mentioned earlier, economic development is absolutely a team sport and we cannot do the work that we do without so many different partnerships and collaborations, whether or not it's with local economic development organizations, our state resources, uh, our partner at Jobs Ohio, workforce development initiatives, higher education, utility partners, developers, et cetera. And, you know, not the least of which is is all of you are, are, are valuable private businesses. All of you are part of what makes this region so incredibly successful. So join us you know, in these efforts. Uh, connect with us, as Elaine mentioned. Tell us what you need to innovate and move your business forward. Make sure you're leveraging the multiple R&D resources that we have, not only in this region, but really across the state and help us to continue to grow this region 
by sharing what you love about the Dayton community with your peers and in industry. Partner with our educational institutions to engage that young talent and create the stickiness that will make them proud to call Dayton home and want to be here, be part of the exciting things that are going on in our region. So with that, Thanks to all of you for you know, listening in today. We appreciate the opportunity to present to you